Hello everyone. Welcome to Tech Bytes by Scalar. And in today's video, we will be covering the topic of AB testing or AB experimentation. This is a term which you might have heard quite a lot of time, maybe uh, in news related to marketing or news related to websites and so on. So today you will be getting a simplified overview of what is this topic and a practical example walkthrough for the same so that you understand how to use it in the future if required. Before I move on, I would request you to subscribe to this channel if you are interested in getting such videos or watching such videos in the future. A bit about me before we proceed. So my name is Nitish and I work as a senior data analyst at Google in the Singapore office. Coming to the topic at hand, what is A-B testing? If you would have read about this topic or maybe heard it and been through the different definitions around the same, you would find different books or different articles of different definitions and often they are loaded with a lot of jargon. So I will try to simplify it to the best of my ability. A-B testing is a statistically reliable framework to compare the effect of any kind of change in user experience on a website or a web page. So the important parts are highlighted here, which you should really pay attention to. The first important part is change in user experience. So if you are making any kind of change in user experience in on a website or a web page, and if you want to understand what effect will it have on the users, Will it be a positive effect, a neutral effect, or a negative effect? And do so in a statistically reliable and robust manner, then A-B testing or A-B experimentation is the go-to tool for you. Okay? So with this definition in mind, let's go ahead. Rather than going through a lot of theory, let us try to understand the concept or the process of A-B testing and experimentation by using a practical situation or a case study. The background of the case study or the premise of the case study is as follows. Let's say you work in a company, an internet company, which is named searchmyquery.com. The company has a landing page, which has a white background, and you can enter a query into the search bar and get search results. So it's a search engine. Someone in the company claims that if we change the background to light blue, it will drive in higher engagement from the users and will be beneficial for the company in the long run. And they have come to you, the data scientist in the company, to help them verify this, whether it is true or not. And you will be using your AB experimentation knowledge to verify this. Okay. Just we can take a simple assumption here that the weekly unique visitors to the website are around 1 million. Okay, so 1 million users visit this website on a weekly basis or an average right now. Okay, so that is an assumption we can take in this simplified scenario. So let's go through the different steps in the A-B testing process. The first step for any analytical problem that we generally solve is the definition of the problem. So here we need to define the as we have already mentioned multiple times, this is an experiment. An experiment generally starts with some sort of an assumption, right? We need an assumption or we need to test an assumption while performing an experiment. Such a formalized assumption in the field of statistics is often termed as a hypothesis. That is why we have something called a hypothesis testing in A-B testing experimentation, right? So it is a part of A-B testing. A hypothesis is nothing but a formalized assumption, okay? So our hypothesis here is that changing the background from white to blue will drive up engagement. But we still don't know what exactly do we mean when we say engagement. What is exactly engagement? 
we need to determine that that's really important in this scenario we can define engagement as number of queries divided by the number of visitors to the website that is a, a metric that we can define as engagement again different people might propose different metrics but let us assume that within the company this is the accepted metric that everybody tracks okay so let us assume for that uh, and this is an agreed upon metric for this experiment so now we have a metric which we can test on and check whether we get more engagement with a white background or the blue background so if the assumption is correct if the person's assumption is correct then engagement from blue background or engagement after putting a blue background must be much much higher or significantly higher than engagement with a white background okay so this is the definition of the problem a formalized definition of the problem The next step is setting the parameters or the value of parameters for the experiment. So what are the parameters for the experiment? I've already mentioned that this particular website has 1 million weekly users. Per week, around 1 million unique visitors visit this website. In the area of statistics, such a universe of users is often termed as a population so population is the total number of users in a particular study in this case coming to the website or coming to the landing page of course we cannot run this experiment on the complete population of 1 million users why because we don't know it will work or not so there might be a lot of harm that might be caused if our assumption was wrong so we take a subset of this population which we call as the sample we randomly select some percentage of the population which we call as the sample and we conduct our experiment on that we try to make sure that the sample is large enough to yield us significant results but at the same time no, not very very large so as to affect the user experience significant for a lot of users okay so the sample size is something you will have to determine using this so let's say we consider a sample size of two percent of the population to be reasonable because two percent boils down to twenty thousand users which is a very decent amount of people so this is the sample size this is the first parameter that you need to set the second parameter that is important to consider is called the confidence the confidence level going back to the concept of sample let's say today you are pulling in two percent of people from this one million population at random using some random algorithm tomorrow you perform the same exercise you are more probable to get a different set of people right there might be some people overlapping between the two but a lot of people might be different because your sampling percentage is small so how do you make sure that you overcome this problem due to this sampling error right this sampling might introduce an error which is called the sampling error which might affect your experiment so that is where the concept of confidence comes into the if we set up let's say a confidence level of 95 percent what we mean to say is let's say this experiment took place a lot of times i have a 95 percent confidence that the results that i get from this particular experiment would hold true now there are a few cases wherein it will still might not hold but they are very less in number so this is the confidence level that you will have to set typically we set it to 95 percent in some cases even 99 percent or 99.5 percent is also acceptable it depends on the person conducting the experiment and they analyze the data to see what is acceptable and how much risk is involved in the whole process so the sample size and confidence level are 
are the parameters that we need to decide upon and set for the experiment. From the previous section, we understand that we need to conduct an experiment on 20k users with a 95% confidence level. Right? Confidence level. Okay? Now, what will be the next step in the experiment? We need to show the users the new or the changed background, right? And that is how we will know how they react or what is the effect of that background on them. But we can't show all the users the new background because we won't know how the users under the same conditions having or seen the original background would have reacted, right? Herein you can claim that if let's say the rest of the 98% users are still seeing the original background, why aren't we considering that? The reason behind that is generally in such websites, there are a lot of optimizations that keep on taking place and a lot of external interventions that keep on taking place, right? So let's say if somebody is running some kind of a campaign, some other team is doing some kind of a test, it might interfere with your test. So you have to make sure that this 20K or this 20,000 users are not a part of any other change or study. Otherwise, your results might get contaminated. And within this users, we split it into two populations or rather the two parts. The first is called test and the second is called control. The test population is the population on which we show the new or, or the intervention, right? The new uh, web page or the intervention in general that we are putting. So let's say even if you were changing some kind of algorithm or changing the layout, the new change would be shown to the test population. And the old one or the status quo, uh, the white page would be shown to the control population. Okay? So the split is done randomly and generally we do a 50-50 split. So 50%, 50% split. So in this case, you will have 10K each users shown test versus control. Okay? And you let this experiment run for some time maybe you can let it run for a week or a month depending on how much data you want to collect and how much time do you have to conduct the experiment for right so these things you have to balance and you let the experiment run for some time and collect the data the next step after collecting the data is analyzing the results so you have the parameters I will just write params that we have already defined in step two. And in step three, we implemented all the, all the experiments, the, uh, the experiment framework and collected the data. So now it's the time for analyzing the results. To analyze the results, you would have to first calculate, of course, you will have to calculate the engagement metrics for the test population and control population or the test sample and the control sample, right? I'm writing that as e, uh, ET and EC respectively, right? So you will be calculating these two metrics by using the queries and the visitor data from these from these two tests or the, this, these two samples. And as we had discussed, common sense just dictates that ET should be much, much more than EC. But the problem is that we have just conducted a test on taking one random sample. How do we know that for different samples, this result would hold? That is where the concept of statistical significance comes into the picture and the theory of statistics come to, comes to our rescue. Armed with all this knowledge, Let's go towards getting some conclusions, right? So we already have the engagement metric for the test and the control samples. So the first thing that we might want to do is to see or maybe obtain the difference between the two, right? Because 
from the beginning we have been trying to say that this should be much much more than zero at least significantly more than zero and that is something that we have been pursuing right we have been trying to pursue the same but this is a difference between the between two numbers so we need to standardize it right in statistics we need to standardize so that standardization is done by standard deviation so it might be provided to you or you might have to estimate it but we won't go into the details of that but you need to divide it by the standard deviation okay and using this final number or this final value and maybe using some tables etc you get what is called the p value the p value for this experiment okay so you get the p value p value stands for probability value and it is the probability under the assumption that the what we call as the null hypothesis null hypothesis in this case would be that there won't be any change in engagement with the intervention of a blue background the, there won't be any change in the engagement with the blue background change at all so that is the null hypothesis assuming this null hypothesis is true what's the probability of getting this number that we are getting or observing this difference that we are getting so using this definition it's very intuitive to understand that the p value is lesser the better right because you want that probability of getting this number under the assumption that this is true should be very less right because you want to avoid that false positive okay so the p value in practice should be lesser than 1 minus the confidence level that we have defined right so this should be lesser than 0 0.05 so if your p value turns out to be let's say something like a 0 0.03 maybe a point 0, 01 or so on then in this experiment you can say you can go back to your stakeholder and or maybe your colleague and say that it does seem like the change in the color of the background to blue will drive an upward lift in the engagement metric that's all you can say you cannot say how much it will drive right but you can say it will drive an upward lift in the uh, metric for engagement that's all you can say if it is lesser let, let's say if it is sorry if it is more than 0 0.05 let's say if we get something like a uh, 0.09 or maybe 0.1 then that is a red flag and in that you will go go back and say that i don't think i have enough evidence to support your claim that changing the color of the background will make a difference to the engagement metric so that would be your conclusion in that case okay so now i think we are able to understand how do we start with a problem then define it and go through all the steps and conclude whether that intervention or the uh, the change that we are making to the user experience is having a positive effect on the user experience or not and different companies big and small use this framework for solving different problems so let's say if a company like Amazon or YouTube, they would have a recommendation algorithm for their products or videos respectively. And they might use A-B testing to check if they make a change to that recommendation algorithm, how would it affect the users? And how would it affect the engagement? And they might define their own metrics for the same. And like that, there are different applications in the industry where A-B testing is widely used and is very useful. So with this, we come to the end of today's video. I hope that you have a reasonable knowledge about A-B testing and experimentation right now. And these are not just buzzwords to you, but you understand them as well. Thank you so much for your attention and your time. If you like this video, please click the like button. And in case you have any suggestions for us, please leave comments so that we can improve upon. Have a good day or good night. Thank you.